everybody welcome to handmade studio i'm cheryl han woodlock in today's tutorial alfred and i are going to show you how to do some crazy pattern making it's ideal for beginners and it is one of the easiest techniques to do when you are first starting your mosaic journey so join me soon in this tutorial and we'll speak to you soon <laughs> This is one of the easiest ways to fill in your mosaics. I do it with beginners. It gives them confidence about finding shapes, pattern making, and all of that sort of thing. So we can fill in very easily our background by doing this crazy pattern making. The focus is the teacups, and then we use the crazy, crazy pattern making to fill in around the edges. So I'm going to show you how step by step the do's and the don'ts and the things to look for. We're going to start off with our tile. Now using a whole tile is going to be a waste because our tile is actually bigger than our board. So I would cut it in half and use smaller pieces. I've got a little piece here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in the newspaper and cut it. So I have my newspaper here. I don't use a whole sheet of newspaper or a whole newspaper. I don't need to do that. It's a real waste of paper. What I do use is just two sheets. That makes it a little bit stronger. I then fold it in half. And when I fold it in half, I then pop my tile in there and then fold it in half. Now I'm going to put it on the ground and bash on the ground, tap it on the ground. I'm not going to do it on the table because the tables do move and everything else will vibrate. So not a good idea. Choose a surface. I've got a concrete surface in here. If you don't have a concrete surface, get a paving stone and tap it gently on your concrete paving stone and that should do the job. Now the hammer that you are going to use just any simple hammer will do the job. All you're going to do is just with the weight of the hammer, allow it to drop. Don't give it a good bash, otherwise you'll end up with lots and lots of little shards. So all we're wanting to do is just dropping it from a little bit of a height, dropping it down. And if you keep dropping it down and then just randomly checking it. So when you drop down, I'm going to go there. So I just put that and then I drop it down, open up to see if my cut has broken and continue on. I have seen people talking about turning the tile upside down and bashing it with the tile upside down. Not a good idea because the whole idea of doing this is we're going to have to flip the tiles over anyway to see their right Face. If they're upside down, you won't be able to put them in easily into your mosaic. So have them the right side up. Some people recommend having them upside down so you don't crack the tile glaze on the front. Don't worry about it. The tile glaze is going to crack anywhere. So you are not protecting the surface. Just leave it the right side up and away you go. I'll be back. to make sure is that you've got protective glasses on. I got my reading glasses so that's not going to be an issue but if you don't have reading glasses or anything protective please wear your glasses. Always make sure that you have the newspaper over the front so any shards will not flick up into your face. It just stays contained within the newspaper. I now have my tile so I'm just going to open it up and I've got some nice little shapes happening here. You can work with them just on your newspaper and just by gently putting that over that way. But what I do find is that it's easier to have them on an ice cream lid. So I have these little trays that I can stack and that way it's easy to put my work away for later. I do like to organize my tiles a little bit and it just makes it easy. Now, I now have my work in front of me. I've deliberately painted this. I've used a black 
thin set, uh, that a thin set being a concrete adhesive. So I've used a black concrete adhesive to show you guys how to do this so it will stand out. I have fairly even gaps all the way I through. I do have a few larger shapes there on the outside and then I have smaller shapes around on the inside. They, the small, really small pieces are to fill in gaps, not to actually mosaic. So we're going to start. When you do this, I usually do a little bit of the outside. I do my outside first, and then I do around my focus point. Now my focus point is going to be my actual circle. So I'm just going to move this in and then we can get started. Now it's really important that the spaces are reasonably even through here. I don't want to see really big gaps and really big gaps means that the focus is no longer on your tessera or your tile. It's going to be starting on the gap. So if I have a really big gap here, you tend to look at the big black area, not the tiles. As soon as I move that in, you're looking at the piece as a whole. So if you have a really big gap, and some people do the really big gaps because they don't understand that it needs to be what we call very, very tight. So if you have these really big gaps here, I'm just going to pull it up. You are no, look, no longer looking at the pattern of your tiles, you're starting to look at the gaps in between. So very important for beginners to understand that the gaps I call negative space. So we're going to look at the negative space that we have in between our tiles, as well as our tiles, which are the positive space. What we're going to do is we're going to do our border first. Now with doing our border, we want to make sure that we have the straight edges on our border. I've got a big tile here. I'm making sure it sits nicely on that side and that side. And we're looking at our tiles that we have here. I can put my next tile there. That's starting to look really good. And I can put another tile here and that fits really nicely. Now I have a gap here that will need to be fitted in later. I just want to point out a little thing that some beginners do. I'm just going to turn this around. They actually start with triangles and they fill in with a lot of triangles. And the problem with doing a lot of triangles that are very similar it starts looking like shark's teeth and you don't realize that you're actually doing this pattern making until you start grouting. So make sure that you do not get this happening or even around your circle because it will start looking like the rays of a sun, which is not the look that we want. So make sure that you aren't creating patterns without realizing. If you are not sure, take a photo. Get your camera, take a photo of what you've done. And a photo usually shows you what's actually happening on your piece. Now what I do need to do is I'm going to glue those down. So I'm just going to use my baggie that is my glue in there and see how the glue oozes out that is ready to go. So I'm just going to wipe that off. I always have a damp sponge by my side. So if my fingers get dirty, I can clean them very quickly. When you are gluing your tiles, the trick is just to pick up your tile, put your glue on, and I've done a tutorial on gluing. So you want to make sure that you've got enough glue on there but not so much that it's going to ooze out everywhere, but not so little that you don't have enough when you place it down. Now, when I place this down, I don't squash it. I'm just going to give it a bit of a jiggle and that locks it to the board. So I'm just moving it and that is now stuck. I'm going to pick up my next one, rotate it to the side, place my glue on, and then give it a little bit of a jiggle. 
and that is glued. What I have seen students do is they pick it up, they move it around in their fingers, they get distracted, they talk to the other people, either that side or that side. Then they forget where the piece went. Was it that way or, cause that no longer fits. Was it that way? That doesn't fit. So make sure when you pick up your tile, you always just rotate it to the side. Don't move it away. Just leave it to the side so you know where the placement is. This is really easy because I don't have a lot of tiles that I've laid down. But if you have a whole heap of tiles that you have laid down, then you will get confused. Now my next row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in these two gaps here. I could start around here, but I'm just going to fill these gaps now so you guys can have a look at how this is done. I can get my little tray of, I've got lots of little tiles here, and some of these are going to be absolutely perfect for putting in. This one will slide in beautifully. I've got a nice little gap there. So that fits in. I could have put a little tile like this and just slotted that in. What that actually gives me is a nice straight line, but it creates a straight line going all the way through. I don't know if you can see this yet, but you would get this continuous line going through and it's not a good idea then you start creating this pattern you start creating a negative space that you don't realize so I'm going to pop that out because I don't want that there what I want to do is break up this continuous line now what I have is a line going through and then it stops that line stops in its tracks I need to put in a little piece here and I can slot in that little piece there. That is the nice thing about having this tray of little pieces ready to go. So let's pick it up. This is a really small piece. If I wanted to, I could actually lay the glue just on the board. Then I can press that down. When you're using really small pieces, it becomes very difficult. Now I could use tweezers like this, pick them up and pop the glue on the, the tile. But it does make it difficult. So I'm going to, again, just pop some glue into that space there. And now I'm just going to place my tile in there, remembering not to squash and I've got a nice little space in between my tiles. I'm going to go around here. I'm just going to go around through there. So I want some tiles. Now, if I do a big tile like this one here, I'm starting to create a gap over here. And that gap could be filled in with another little tile, but it's too wide for the space that is there. I can rotate it and turn it around there. That would also work. It's not quite the same height, which is good. And in fact, I might, so that tile would work okay. But what I would prefer is perhaps a smaller tile that will drop down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place this tile here. It has a nice little curve already, so it's got a slight curve on it. And that one is just going to sit nicely. What it does, it also breaks up this height. So I've got uh, this taller piece, now I've got a lower piece. And I can put a triangle in there. Now, the way that you can work out what you need next, if I put these upside down, the shape that I've got here is like a triangle. So it's a pointy triangle. It's not a right angle triangle, it's a pointy triangle. So let's see if I can find the shape that's going to fit in there. If I put this one in, it's too large. Pop that back. 
Let's try this one. It's just a little bit too tall. Let's try this one and this one fits in nicely. So we've got now the space there. That one just fits in nicely. It's a little bit tight here. I can nibble a little bit of that off. So what I can do now is I'm going to get my permanent marker. And I'm going to just mark where I believe it needs to be cut off. So I'm just going to lift that up and nibble that off. Just that little nibble gives me that room for space, for the negative space that I need between my tiles. Also, you need that little bit of space for your grout to go in. So afterwards, you are going to grout this. And if you have your tiles too closely together, there is no space for the tiles to sit in. Now, I need a piece through here. So let's have a look at the space that we are going to create. So I need a tile that will go that way and I need another one there. So it is a long skinny triangle. So let's see if I can find a long skinny triangle in here. That's a long skinny one. It's too long for that piece. So I need something smaller. I've got a smaller piece. That one should fit in there and it does. So that fills in that space nicely. Now I've got that angle through there, if you can see that. And then I have an angle going that way. I've got an angle going that way and an angle going that way. It's going to be really hard. So what I'm going to look at first is that triangle shape and try and fill in that shape, if you can see that, that shape to start or a triangle like that. So let's see what we have here. This triangle, that pretty much fills in the space. It does it really, really well. Again, it's a little bit tight. I may need to nibble a little bit of that off. So I'm just going to cut that there, lift it up. Try not to move the other tiles too much. It's always a bit difficult. And give that a bit of a nibble. It's not a lot that I am taking off. And remember, we need to put it back where we found it. Remember, don't move them around too much. I've got a thin space there. So here I have, again, another really small tile that I found on that tray. And that will sit in there quite nicely to fill in that gap. You don't want to have big gaps. So those little pieces do it really well. Now I can glue this in. I'm going to start on the outside, not the inside. There's a reason for this. If I start trying to move this piece out, I'm going to move all my, uh, see how these tiles moved out of place and it upsets the balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this piece in by starting with this tile first. And he's going to lock everybody else in. So let's pick this one up. Remember, when you pick them up, just tilt them to the side. Don't take them too far away because now it's getting a little bit confusing about where your tiles are going to go. So that is now locked into place. Tilt this one, remember, and put some glue on, lock into place. So that's now locked. I can now pick up this little piece of tile. Remember, I can glue in here rather than gluing the tile. This tile is so small that I'd end up with glue on my tweezers. So just by laying him in, he is now locked into place. This small piece, again, I could glue on him, but it is just as easy to put this glue in here and glue that down. So that is now locked into place. I've got this tile, this is my last tile, and I can easily get him out, glue him down, and continue on. 
So we have done that. Now I can continue on to do a little bit more of the side. So we've got that happening. That fits in nicely. I can do that one. That fits in nicely as well. I can put a little tile through here just to change that up. That's working. Remember, glue these in now. Now the other thing that you can do if you're worried about losing the position of your tiles, get your camera, take a photo of your tiles. And if you do that, it means that you won't lose the positioning of your tiles. Now I'm going to go around some more of my central piece and put some more tiles around. So away we go. And that is all locked. Now, what I did then was I just tested to see if that was glued down or not. If that tile moved, it means I need to glue it. If it doesn't move, I know that it is glued down. So now we've got a lot of tiles glued down. We've got a little bit of glue oozing out. That's okay. I will clean that in around about 15 minutes when this glue is firmer. Now I can start filling in these shapes. It's a good idea to sometimes turn your board around so that way you can see what you are creating. See it from a different perspective is really, really good, especially when your eyes get tired. So by rotating your board, you are going to see it from a totally different angle. So it took me around about an hour, an hour and a half to complete. I had a break in between, so it's always good to have a break. Remember to turn it around so you can see what you were doing. I've got Alfred here wanting to say hi to everybody. So remember <laughs> to take your time, enjoy doing your mosaics. I'm Cheryl Hamwoodlock from Handmade Studio. Say thanks for watching. Bye. Boy, yes, you are. <laughs>